Hello everyone. Welcome to one more session on machine learning. And today we are going to talk about data modeling. Data modeling using machine learning. Machine learning is one of the most buzzwords of the century where not only organizations but people are or candidates are just crazy about machine learning. Organizations are really crazy to hire candidates who knows machine learning. Okay, so before we just get started with data modeling using machine learning, let's have a quick round of introductions about myself. I am Krish and I'm having a 10 plus years experience in this data science field and I have worked in different domains across my career and I am associated with Odin School. Odin School is one of the upscaling platform which helps you acquire new skill sets and makes you stay updated with the volume with the evolution of technology let us talk about what are the things we are going to cover in this session today we are going to talk about what is our data model how my business how it is benefit for the business what types of solutions we have using data models how industry looks at these or consume these data models and we are also going to learn how we are going to import these data into the Python environment. So let us get started with it. So what is a data model? Data model is a solution or is a end solution which you get from different types of data that we put in. Like for example, suppose I have my house and I want to know what is my what the price of my house is going to be. For that, I must know what are the characteristics of different of my house that I am having. So I will have the area of the house, the number of floors I am having, the number of rooms I am having, okay, and the location of the house, etc. And the number of bathrooms, the number of living rooms, the number of uh, kitchens or the number of doors, etc. And etc. So these are all characteristics, and based on that my price of the house is going to be so that is to find out what the price of house how, what the price of my house will be based on different characteristics if i create something or some intelligent thing which is going to uh, tell me what my price is going to be that is what uh, we call a data model or suppose um you uh, there are uh, we create a uh, we create an intelligent thing which tells us what the percentage of which team is going to win. Like for example, you know about IPL. I, okay, so uh, there are two teams which are playing. And if uh, from my model I get to know what are the chances of team A winning the match. Like 97% or full 100% or even 40%. If that, um, if that system can tell me that is what data model is all about. So how the things are going into the system. So any anything which gives me a solution which tells me so what is the output is going to be or like for example what uh, if I create a system which is going to tell me like what is my GDP going to be based on different other factors or what's the you know the rise of COVID patients is going to be or what's the population size is going to be based on different other factors. Okay so that thing is called a data model so in brief in what goes inside a data model inside a data model we have a uh, variables where we have got data data can be of different forms and mostly it will be of variables it can be a numeric or it can be a string okay and in that variables we use a technique you we use a smart technique which we call an algorithm and based on these algorithms we do the prediction so uh, suppose uh, this is one thing uh, data goes in into the system okay then we use an algorithm and from there we get a solution which is called a prediction this entire thing is called a data model we are going to talk about this algorithm the algorithm and all the intelligent part in, uh, in later part of this course but you uh, get one thing like here you have you get some data or some 
you have some solution as an uh, as an input data okay and after that i do so i use a smart technique or use an algorithm and i get a prediction so this entire thing is called as data model so let us take one more example suppose i am inputting a couple of um, apples a couple of bananas and a couple of oranges and i want to find out which one is which i want to tag so uh, anything which is red in color is an apple anything which is long and in yellow in color is a banana and anything which is orange in color is called a mango so if i uh, i input some fruits and it gives me which is an apple which is a banana or which is a mango that is called a uh, data model okay so what is going on inside that you have to find out like you are inputting these data okay where i have just tagging so this is a mango this is a banana this is a orange so how it is happening anything which is red in color is a apple anything which is yellow in color is a banana anything which is orange in color is an is a mango then i am telling the algorithm or to learn from this so anything which is red becomes an apple and here so it you see the interpretation here i am teaching anything that is red anything that is yellow or anything that is orange in color have got it can be an apple banana and a mango and here i apply an algorithm okay uh, so algorithm what does the algorithm do algorithm learns from these interpretations and after that it do it does some pre processing so these things um there is some pre processing and after that it tells you which one is which okay so this entire thing is called a data model so in a data model what happens i'll just tell you in a little more detail like first is if i receive the i receive the data okay let's so what is happening in a data model i first i receive the data so from that is i called as an input variable or as your input data from that data i do some pre processing things or i we can talk about we can say we i do some you know processing on that data from that data i find out some insights and after that i apply some machine learning algorithm uh, that is this entire step is known as model training okay and from that i uh, and i it is called model training and from that i have my output okay this is all about data modeling okay let us um, look at the workflow of how a data model works and how python plays a important factor in it okay so what is happening so um i input the data i have my input data where just like i put in like a couple of mangoes oranges and banana so there i have my machine learning algorithm doing the things okay where you know you have lots of things are going on okay from there it from the machine learning things it does the prediction and once the prediction is done i evaluate whether my apple is being correctly tagged or my i am uh, i am able to correctly identify this is a banana or this is a apple and if my evaluation is incorrect if it is correct i have my final output if doesn't ha happen so i again go to the training thing so let me just walk you through what the data model is first i have my uh like let me go walk through how a data model works first i have a trained data in trained data i mean uh, you have your yeah, the labeled oranges apples and banana okay from there i train the machine learning here i input the data into the python environment okay so which which i can use a notebook or a spider and there i will be using an algorithm to understand the data and here i'll be doing 
pre-processing okay and there will be a lot of uh, cleaning and then I'll apply the algorithm and my model is going to learn from that so this is the model I'm going to apply and from there and I'm uh, the machine learning algorithm is coming and I'm making the future prediction and in case after the next after that what happens the model is going to evaluate whether I have been able to correctly identify whether it's an apple or some mango if it is done I have a solution okay so I give the output as my that is my final solution if not if it doesn't work out so again I go to the uh, training set so this is how the entire workflow goes you have your input data training is happening creation of model is happening and the final prediction happens in case if the model doesn't work out well so it will go again get trained okay and again the model will be created and again it will get predicted so this is a complete life cycle of how data model works okay so how these things work out is for any any data model you have a training data so that is a data which is provided to you so that is like for example for a house prices you are given uh, like some uh, some uh, house some you are given i have given you the prices of, of some house which have having different characteristics okay that is my training data from that data i do some pre processing by pre processing i mean there are lots of steps involved in pre processing which also we are going to cover in this course from pre processing after pre processing is done i do i i apply machine learning algorithm which is about training the data once the data is trained i i have my final output that is i do the prediction in case my prediction and when based on my prediction i evaluate whether i have predicted is correct or not if it is correct i will have my final output if it doesn't correct so again i go ahead and train the model until i have a better prediction so this entire flow is called a data model workflow in machine learning okay so how these uh, things are used by the industry or how these machine learning tools are used by the industry so i am a customer i what i do is i know about the application so what i do like for example i have my app which gives me which i use which that is my that is my end point which the customers get to use based on application they get the data but what is happening in that application is we have a historical data or that is the input data from input data we use the machine learning model or a model in place based on that we build the final model and from that model it gets deployed in the application and from the application the customer benefit so the output is of a the, the basic of uh, front end is done it's used by the customer where the customer like they what they do is they input the characteristics of the house and they get the price of the house this is what the customer is seeing but what is happening at the back end on the back end it's a complete the machine learning model is involved where there are historical data or previous data or training data is there based on which a machine learning model is built from that model it continuously predicts based on the characteristics which the customer is giving and based on that the model is predicting the result and finally we have a solution so this is the price of your house or for example one more thing which can be suppose i want to know which uh, which team is going to win okay or whether it's going to rain or not anything like that any kind of solution i input okay these are my teams which are going to play and these are the different characteristics so these are the history that is my input data which i am giving to the application and that application returns okay this team is the chances of winning of this team is say 60% or 70% okay so what what this is the front end the customer gets to see but then the back end it's all about machine learning models okay uh, there are a lot of areas where you know machine learning can be used 
it's not only you know it can be used in one particular domain you can talk about any domain any industry where machine learning is used and it gives us a better solution suppose for example smart healthcare okay e-commerce finance log analysis and security traffic control telecom search and then optimization manufacturing trading fraud analytics retail name anything and you know a machine learning is giving a solution like in finance suppose i have a bank in place i want to find out those customers who are continuously defaulting their loans so for that i use a uh, I, I can build a model based on different customers so, so that what happens uh, whenever any any customer comes from a loan comes for a loan based on the different characteristics like for example based on their credit history based on how number of loans they are having based on the uh, uh, based on the previous history i can have a prediction like what are the chances of this customer being a defaulter so and from that model i can get that and based like for example if i customer i'm getting see there are chances of 80 percent chances that this customer will come will become a defaulter in a matter of six or seven months then i will say i won't give this person any loan because in the longer run uh, this customer is going to become a defaulter so how do i know this thing this is all about machine learning so i have so how this is done in the back end is i have got historical data of different customers where i have seen in the past like any customer having like two to three loans and those who have got liabilities and they have got uh, this is the income they have chances of defaulting that is one thing which can be done like in telecom industry they we have got different operators where we have seen different customers moving from one operator to another if i give the telecom industry so these customers are on the verge of churning from your or leaving your services they can reach out to the customers and they can stop the attrition or they can um, decrease the churn percentage so this is again part of machine learning and uh, retail sector if i get to know how which the customers are demanding or which products are in demand or so for example if i'm uh, looking for launching a product which pro which customer segmentation i should target or which customers like there can be different uh, level of customers high medium and low which customers should i target for that like there is a log analysis like you have a system in place and uh, like for now and then your system is crashing so uh, you can have a log analysis done you can have a model in place based on which so no matter if uh, based on different log and based on different system configuration you can find out uh, when your system is going to crash or for example in uh, you have nowadays a battery operated cars are coming suppose i uh, give you a model an intelligent model based on which you get to know like uh, what's the health of your batteries and by when by what's the duration the based on which your battery is going to need a health checkup or a servicing that is all about a uh, machine learning model is going to um, is going to uh, tell you and help you in that not only about not only in these sectors but in traffic and in manufacturing you get to know what is the optimum you know uh, temperature of a particular product so that you get a better output or like what's the optimum quantity of a particular chemical that should be given in um, in the composition so that you get this product and which becomes error free so this is all about machine learning like and i suppose i want to find out my what the stock market prediction is going to be for the next two to three days so again i am this all about machine learning models if i want to find out how many frauds are happening or for any transaction what is the number any any transaction which is becoming fraud i can build a model and have a check on that switch so that whenever a fraud is happening it will give me a check so this is the fraud which is happening so it is not only sticking to one domain you can speak of any domain or anything any industry and machine learning has always a solution in one form or the other like um 
like uh, for like for for be it to your let's talk about your smartphone in your smartphone the, and all the things that you are using is using machine learning at the back end like so that's why it is called a smartphone because based on your browsing history you have your amazon or flipkart suggesting to you based on your you know the log analysis you can understand which are the applications which are faulting and the developers are working how good we can work on to make it more better based on your search history you know organizations get to know which are the keyword which are the product people are looking for people are just crazy about so you can name anything and machine learning is the core or is the only solution where people are going and pm that the back end of each and everything for any kind of solution that's where a data model comes into picture data modeling can be used at each and everything where i can give a machine learning solution to it okay let's talk about what is an algorithm an algorithm is a is a program okay which are it's a set of rules uh, uh, which will give you an output based on the given input suppose you have an input and you you use that algorithm to get an output it is a program which helps you create a it can create a um it can create it can create an equation it can create a function and based on that it is going to give you so that is what an algorithm it's the smart technique a smart function which it uses based on the input it will give you a solution it will give you the prediction that's what an algorithm there are lots of different algorithms there are algorithms like regression logistic regression linear regression there is random forest there is maybe base there is neural network name anything else lots of different algorithms which are in there and the most uh, and the library sklearn learn library is one of the source where you can import these algorithms and use it in your models okay now let's talk about what are the different type of models which is available to us there are two types of models which we have one is a regression problem one is a classification problem so let me explain it in a different way there are two ways where we get a solution one is when you are predicting a number suppose we want to know what is the gdp of india is going to be in let's say 2021 okay suppose what if, what if i want to know what is the population of my country is going to be or what the expenditure of my of myself is going to be okay or what is the temperature of a particular day is going to be so whenever we are dealing with numbers or when we are concerned with numbers when we want to know what is the temperature or what when we are talking about any any numeric prediction that is called a regression and whenever and the other way when we are dealing with we want to know whether it's going to be a yes or no or whether it's going to be team a or team b or it's going to be answer in hot or cold so in any when we are getting an option and we are doing the prediction that is called a classification problem so based on these two different problems you can see a lot of things going on that's the base based on which the entire solution or the entire industry is based on like when we are doing a log analysis the output that you are getting is whether your system is going to fail or not in yes or no suppose when you are doing a prediction of whether a customer is going to be a defaulter or not again if you are doing it in a yes or a no suppose we are going to be a retail industry you are going to target how much uh, the what's the um, optimum temperature that's required for that chemical composition that you must put in to get the best possible product so there we talk about regression when we because we need the amount of quantity okay so so these are only the two base things based on which the entire data modeling is built on so for any kind of solution we have got two different type of solution one is regression the one is classification in regression we deal with numbers and in classification 
we deal with category or it can be numericals or it uh, sorry it can be uh, classification it can be uh, textual classifications okay so so you can have a uh, um, based on this graph you can explain what a uh, regression and a classification is going to be in the regression we have what is my temperature is going to be or what is my income is going to be so you get a straight line because here by will be number okay but when i talk about a classification i won't have any number in place but i will have a string okay so from these two graphs we can see the one is having a numeric prediction the other is having a a uh, string prediction or you can have a textual prediction so uh, the relationship we get a straight line and here in classification we get a crooked line or a shaped graph graph we can say uh, in regression it's the relationship is linear okay but in a classification it is non linear we are going to get so let me explain what is a linear and a non linear equation in linear we can say when we have an equation we can say y equals mx okay so if we have the equation y equals to mx plus c we have a linear equation because the maximum degree here of x is 1 it is a linear relationship that's why we get a, a straight line so for any value of y, for any value of x, we predict y. So that is what an equation is all about. That is what a regression is all about. So this is main job of a regression where we are dealing with numbers. So this is our target variable and this is your input. And no matter what happens, we are going to get a straight line because and the degree of the equation is going to be 1. But when we are talking about the classification problem, the relationship is not going to be linear. So how do we, what do you mean by that? It means that your, your equation is going to be like this. Y equals mx plus so. So this is what a nonlinear equation will look like. Y equals to mx plus cx square plus e. Because it is not linear. If you look at the data, you can see uh, in a linear, in a regression model, you can, the uh, what we look for when we are building our regression, we, we build a line which best fits that data. So, a straight line will be covering most of the data points in between. But when we look at the classification problem, we can see like a straight line won't be covering, you know, maximum of the points. You can have a crooked line which will be covering yes majority of the points but yes a straight line will never solve your purpose so that is why you have a crooked line the more degrees that you put in the more pro curve your uh, your line is going to take so any the degree should be greater than one and you never know how many degrees are going to be in that uh, in non-linear equation because it might be two degrees three degrees it's all about the maximum number of data points that is going to touch okay that is what a classification is going to be in regression we have it is the solution is very simple because we have we are dealing with a regret uh, we are dealing with a linear regression linear relationship but in classification we are dealing with any degrees where it is more than one and in industry, if I talk about different case studies and different problem statements, regression, solving a regression equation, it's much easier compared to solving a classification problem. And in terms of the problem statement, you'll find lots of cases, lots of use cases, lots of problem statements where we are dealing with classification problem instead of a regression problem. Okay. Now let us talk about some of the business solutions which using uh, data modeling using machine learning which you can come up with. Okay, so there is uh, image recognition, email spam filtering, test and speech recognition, medical diagnosis, 
ऑनलाइन फ्रॉड सर्च इंजन ट्रैफिक प्रोडिक्शन ऑटोमेटेड ट्रांसलेशन सो यू नेम एनीथिंग एंड देयर इज अ डेटा मॉडल एट द बैक एंड व्हिच इज डूइंग दीस थिंग्स लेट मी टॉक अबाउट अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट ऑल दीस सॉल्यूशंस व्हिच यू आर गेटिंग ओके व्हेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन व्हाट हैपेंस इन अ फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन इज uh it's at the back end i have got historical data i have like for example 1000 transactions out of 1000 transactions there might be a case there are one or two transactions which are fraud okay so i will take that data and i will put i will take it as an input data and i will train my model using machine learning and so that whenever a new data is coming i if i will sense like if any characteristics are present of of a fraud detection i will say this is the one that is causing fraud and based on that a fraud detection will work so at the back end a customer is uh, whenever the transaction is happening the customer gets to see a pop up okay this is a uh, this is a fraud detection but at the back end there is a complete data model which is running at the back end okay so let's talk about image recognition uh, the best example of a image recognition is your smartphones so whenever uh, you like you have your mobile phones where the uh, screen lock is your face suppose if your uh, someone else's face is there your screen doesn't lock, unlock itself so how that is happening that is again a machine learning is there in place in your smartphone so your machine has been trained or your uh, uh, your model has been trained in such a way like based on your face it will open up and if an any other face comes in it will not open up so that is again at the back end the machine learning uh, model is at the back end email or spam filtering so this is something which you get to uh, get to deal with each and every day where you know you get different kinds of mails in your uh, in your inbox some of it are coming in your inbox some goes into the junk box so how this can be done this this is done using in uh, if you are using a gmail it automatically uh, classifies some are in the inbox and most which are not or looks like a fake or junk mail they are moved to the junk mail box so how this is happening this happens again using machine learning where it uh, takes the can whenever if you look at any spam mail you'll get the feel you'll get the content you'll get this from the subject itself you will understand whether it's a mail is a fraud or is a spam or not so these are some of the characteristics which has been put in into the system okay so based on so these are the uh, these are the subject lines which based on which your mail is going to be a fraud and not a fraud this is again a uh, um a uh, training data which has been put in and based on that it works at the back end is again a um, data model is there text and speech recognition uh, oh this is again one of the interesting uh, things of machine learning eco amazon eco is one of the things which is a practical example of this thing text and speech recognition uh, so at the back end is again a machine learning uh, data model is there where it is recognizing the text which you are seeing or the speech which you are seeing or the text which you are typing based on that it is the understanding it is matching so, and based on that it is taking results search in, engine results suppose you are whenever you are searching anything you see automatically based on your uh, your location and based on the recent searches you uh, you have done it gives you the best uh search result which you are looking for how this is happening this is again the browser maintains your history okay the and the browser i mean google maintains your history and based on that information it will give you the best possible match which you are looking for that is again a uh, back end i am talking about machine learning virtual personal assistant automated translation traffic prediction again this is, these are at the back end completely machine learning models are there in place and which makes you and the front end it gives you a solution so being anything many any business solution data modeling is at the back end doing that job for you medical diagnosis and medics and the pharma industry or the medical industry yes machine learning is used a lot 
where based on their drugs they find out what's the mortality rate whether this person is going to survive or not so name anything you cannot think of any industry you cannot think of any solution where machine learning is not used be it anything machine learning is only there for the back end which is doing all these pre-processing and which is uh, creating a solution for you and machine learning is at the back end of, of the data models so name anything and their machine learning is there so data modeling can be used each and every aspect or your day-to-day -day life a data modeling is used okay now in python we have got different type of data types in python we have got numeric in numeric we have got different types of values so let me just show it to you okay there are different data types which are available in python like numeric dictionary boolean set and sequence type which are used in the python environment now we are and and when i'm talking about numeric it has got integer float and complex numbers an integer i mean it doesn't have any you know a decimal number or fractional part it can be one two three and or it can be those whole numbers i'm talking about by float i mean it has got a decimal part in that like 2.476 Okay, so these are all float numbers. When I'm talking about complex numbers, I can talk about exponential numbers. 1.6 e to the power of 70. So all these numbers are termed as exponential. Uh, uh, these are terms as uh, complex numbers. When I'm talking of Boolean, these are also called the dichotomous variables. These have got just two. These are all, uh, you know, com computer uh, data types which can take any values between 0 and 1 they either can take 0 or 1 this is how your log data looks like will take boolean 0 and 1 okay in sequence type you have tuple you have got list and you have strings by strings you mean you have textual uh, data which it can be uh, it can be uh, in alphabets or it can be a text so we are going to talk about a little bit more about this text. I'm going to show you how these data types looks like. Okay. Okay. So if you look at the string, it's going to be a textual data like hello world. When I'm talking about an integer, you have, you know, um, a whole number. Float will have a decimal. Complex, as I told you, will have the exponential part. When I'm talking about a list, list can be of any form. It can be, it's, you can, you have to remember, it will be under the box brackets. Anything which is inside the box bracket, we call the list. See, these are the data types which goes in, in Python. When I'm talking about tuple, you should, you should have a curved brackets in place. Okay. So, uh, and range, range can be like 0 to 2 or 6 or anything. When I'm talking about dictionary, yes, in dictionary, you know, you have a token and you have uh, the key. Okay, so this like name is John, age is 26, uh, sex equals to male. So, these are some dictionaries that based on that you are going to define. You have got curved bracket for dictionary. And again, for set, you have again curved brackets but yes we do not have have the key and the uh, token here in that okay so these are some of the data types which we have in the python environment okay now let us see how we are importing some data into the python environment let's open up python so we will start uh, import so we'll here we'll kind of start uh, importing the data into the Python environment. So there are a couple of ways where you can import the data into the Python environment. The most easiest uh, way I'm going to start with that. But before I do that, let me show you the data. 
the so this is the data set and these are the you know the column names that you are going to see this is not a big data set but around 149 records and around eight columns in there okay so this data i'm going to try to import it and i have named the file name as dataset.xlfx okay so first you just save it and close it first thing the most easiest way is trying to import the data into the python environment so this is the file which i i am talking about so you just select open and upload okay and it is being uploaded and it is uploaded here so this is the first program which we are talking about but when i uh, this is the uh, data set which i have imported in the in the you know uh, uh, in the program but it is still not visible in the python environment so for that i have to bring to that uh, this data so this is our first program which we were talking about uh, which we had learned earlier what i do i move to the next line and for uh, as i told you earlier so there are uh, for dealing with different data frames and data sets i need to import a library which is known as pandas so for importing for importing any kind of library i'll write the command import pandas and i will name it as pd because uh, it doesn't make sense to write the entire library over and over again because i'll be using it whenever I am uh, importing this data set I am naming it as PD and I type in alt and enter and this you see the asterisk was there so it was being executed and it got executed okay so this pandas is now available and I can use this library so what I am going to do next is I am going to call that data file or import that data file bring that data file into the python environment so how do I do that so for that I have to name the uh, name the data set name that table so let's name it um, data data equals so I have to write the library name that is pd dot read so since it is an excel file so I have to type read underscore excel and just under the quotes I will name the file name so which is data set dot x l f s x so please remember in python it is very case, case sensitive so you if the data file name is in uh, first letter was in caps and the others are in lower you have to write it in that proper way if i like like let me see show you how it will happen if i write it in a small and i press alt enter it is running okay so uh, what I'll do is I have to pay attention with the um, uh, caps and lower cases. In case there are issues, it will give you an error. So what I do, I uh, type the uh, pd dot read underscore excel dataset and write the data file name and press control and enter and my data is important. So how do I know like my data is imported or not? So there's one command which you have to type in to know whether you're to look at the data so how do i do that i uh, so this is the table name which i have in which i have imported the data i type data dot head and i want wish to you know look at the top five records i play i press alt enter so it will move to the next line and here you are here you are the data set so please remember whenever the indexing started starts in python it starts with zeros and not with one so that means line one will be a zero so this is the header suppose i wish to you know look at the bottom five so for that data dot tail and i suppose i wish to look at the 10 records so i type in tail and i have it okay suppose if i want to find out the you know the different uh, different data types what types of data about information about this data set what are the data types we have so what i have to do you type data dot d types okay 
Okay. I, I think it won't take. Okay. I type the types and enter. You see, these are object. Object means string. Okay. Int. Knowledge collection. Collecting. Knowledge donating. Float. Complexity. Int. Int or float. So, these are the different data types based on which the data has been imported. So you so this based on this syntax, this is how it will work. So and if you need some more information, what you have to do data dot info, okay, and press. Okay, so this is will give you how many null and non-null values are there. So the number of records in your data set is around 149. And here if you can see there is 148. So that means there are a couple of there is just one record which is missing that's why it is showing as 1948 okay so this is one type of way where you can import the data so there is one more way where you can import the data so this is one where you are importing first importing the data data file in your um, envi python environment and then calling it in the data frame so this is what a data frame is all about so data i have named it it is called a data frame Okay, so what I'm do, I'll have for that I'll need a library which is known as OS library. Okay, so I name I type in or import OS. Okay, so the library has been imported. So what I have to do, I have to uh, change the directory of this uh, of my browser so that it picks up uh, the file from that directory, or I have to uh, give the directory name. Of that location where my file is present so what I'll do I will do os dot chdir and I will type in the uh, location let me look at the location so this is the location which based on which my file is present okay so because it's in I place it in the desktop and I have changed the live uh, change the location if you wish to know where what is the has the directory originally changed or not so for that I will be using this command get cwd and press control enter and this is the desktop this is the location where based on which I have changed so here what I have to do, I have to just call, uh, give the file name. So again, it's a uh, pretty much simple. So I name the data frame as data underscore two equals pd dot read excel data set dot xlx. Okay, I forgot the quotes and the caps. Okay, my data has been imported. Just check this out. The underscore two dot head and okay, my data has been imported and I can see the data here as well. So this is the same data set which has been imported. So we have also learned how to import my data into the Python environment using two methods. Okay, let's move back to the presentation okay so now to just start just a recap of what are the things we have learned in this session we have learned what is our data model okay how it impacts or how is it useful for the business what are the different type of solution which is available like regression and classification how they are and how industry uses these two types of classifications and we have also learned how to import our data into the python environment we have learned two ways okay so hope this session was again for was helpful for you don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching catch you again in the next video thank you bye bye